What's up guys, this is Cody Cleverly with another new video. Today's video's topic, as you could be seeing from the title, is deep copy and shallow copy. Well, we had a comment and they asked me to make a video about this topic and uh, what I said is that why not? We need something which is more theoretical and based on concepts. What can we do here is first let's go and think of something. So we have a scenario here where I create two objects of one specific class. Now, for instance, that class is called student and this class class has a name it has an age now you know that like for like hypothetically speaking if the name is a string type and the age is an integer so we could create something like that like for instance we have two objects created over here you can see Bobby and it has an age of 19 and you can see another object of Julian and you have an age of 22. Now what if I say I want S1 is equal to S2. So what I want here is what if I say is S1 is equal to S2. Now we could basically copy this and this is what you call shallow copy also known as compile generated copy. Uh, the copy is being done by the compiler. So what we could do is that all these pairs are gonna match. Okay, so we have our boilerplate code already written for us, like always, and now what we're gonna create is a class. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a class and it's gonna be called as a student class. It's gonna have a private section and it's always by uh, default, but we could like add it. So we have a private section and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a string type and it's called, there you go. And then we have another thing that's called an age, so we say, in age now what we have in the public section is we have a default constructor so i basically gonna use the name of the class and uh there's gonna be something so it's just we're gonna basically assigning it to zero okay now we have a parameterized constructor and uh, we could give some kind of values to this so we could say string uh name and we could have an int age okay now you're going to be wondering why am I giving the same name and age identifiers as what I gave over here in my data members. So what I could do is using the this pointer like if we did. So if you could, if you haven't watched the this pointer video, I have a card on the top right corner where you could watch that video and understand the concept behind what this pointer does. So basically we're just basically uh, documenting our code so that it could be more understandable. Uh, uh, change it to this and, and this and over here I would change this as well to age and equal to age. You can see that this is completed and we could also have our destructor so we could have a destructor defined so we have a student destructor there you go and we have this thing over here and we don't basically have to do anything right now so I'm just gonna be calling it as like the destructor called okay so now we have our destructor and everything now well, where did my main go so um, a ma major mistake what I do is that I left leave the main on the top so what I have to do is bring this on the bottom okay now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna basically make some objects so we're gonna go and say student and we're gonna call it s1 and now what we want to give is we want to assign values to it by using our parameterized constructor we could just inside of this we could just give a name so i know one was bobby so we have bobby and his age was something like 19 so we have a bobby age 19 now we want a student so we have a student and s2 and uh, his name was julian and his age i think was 22. so we have one that has bobby and its age so my my question here is that if i do s1 is equal to s2 this means whatever is in s1 n now will contain the values of s2 so basically what you would see is if i like select this part over here so what you would see here in julian like all of this so what I'm gonna have is not instead of this, I'm just gonna cut this out. And instead of that, we're gonna have this. We're gonna have this um, over here. So we're gonna have two duplications at the end. How, are we gonna, how is this possible? It's because of simple copy. And this is called shallow copy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over here and I'm just gonna say S1 is equal to S2. Now by that, you're gonna see first a display function. So over here, I would have to show you a display function that would show you the contents of our class object. So let's create a display function with a return type of void. So I just say display and I would not give anything to it. And what I would do is just show the contents to it. So I would say console output and um, just give some kind of name. So a name and console output and the age simply. 
Okay, so we have that defined, we have this defined, and we're gonna call it, so s one dot display and semicolon, and then we're just gonna give another, so that it would know that there's just two classes defined, so s two dot display. So let me just do this before, and then I'm gonna create this after. So compile and run this code, and you'd see that there's Bobby and then his age is 19. There's Julian and his age is 22. And then you can see that two destructors were called. Okay, so far so good. Now, what we wanna do here is we wanna, we assign the contents. Now we wanna check that what happens to S1 and S2. Now what I said over here, they're both are gonna be duplicated and whatever the value of S2 was is gonna be copied to S1. And this is called shallow copy, uh, which a compiler does and performs. So what we could do here is we could just display the contents once again. So I would say S1.display and also give an underline and then also S1. Um, I mean s2 dot display so just display this one as well save it and execute compile and run now you would see Bobby 19 Julian 22 now you would see Julian 22 which was supposed to be Bobby but it converted to Julian and Julian and then they were destroyed so hooray this is how copy constructors work and now you would see now um, now you would ask me don't know every data type like whether it's an integer whether it's a float whether it's a boolean everything is gonna work to copy and I would say yes probably everything but there is an exception and that exception is dealing with pointers now if we have a pointer like for instance uh, this age will be converted to a pointer value so this is a pointer to int age and if you haven't like watched my pointers video or you don't know the concept behind what pointers are I would encourage you to watch my video of pointers which you could see a video card on the top screen so just click on that and watch that video and come back over here to continue watching this one so here we have a pointer uh, variable and it's a pointer to int. So I use the asterisk symbol to indicate that it's a pointer. And now what I would do is I wanna copy this. Now, if we go on a diagram approach over here and we would check that, how is this appearing? So the basic concept behind this is that now I don't have like, uh, these are my original content. Now, I have this original content here, and when I cr try to cr uh, equaling this, instead of having Julian appearing over here, I would have now a pointer. Now, now this has to be deleted, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this part. So I'm just gonna select this part and I'm just gonna delete this part and also delete this part. So also delete the remnants. So what we have here is that we have Bobby and Julian and now this is not a, a regular data type, it's a pointer. Now pointer has to store addresses, right? So it's basically getting memory from the heap. So like for instance, if I have a pointer and it's basically gonna get some kind of memory. So what I would say is like, it's having some hexadecimal value. So I would say over here, some kind of hexadecimal value. So some pound symbol and A and I would say zero one, something like that. So this is hexadecimal and uh, yeah. So this is the hexadecimal value. So we would have over here as well, where generally, the pointers are in different memories. So I would have something like A09. Okay, so this is another hexadecimal value. Now you know that these are different and they're showing different content. So if I go and like draw a line, now what happens here is that you basically has an address and it's pointing to something which is outside. Now outside, there's gonna be something else. Now there's a memory location here. Now over here is the same case. Now this is pointing somewhere outside of the memory, which is not in the, it's not stored in the stack, but it's stored in the heap. So over here, like we have content. So what we could do is, so for instance, I have a value of 19 over here and I would have a value of the same which goes here as 22. Now, these are stored in the heap. Now, like for instance, if I try to copy it, what happens is that the address will be copied. I would have the address copied. So Julian is gonna be over here as Julian. That's confirmed. Like we have Julian over here and we're gonna have Julian over here. But what happens here? So we're gonna have this, instead of pointing over here, which is now not working, it's gonna point to this address. So this address is just gonna be belonging to that. Now what happens is that the value is also copied, so it's 22. Now we have two members, and the problem that goes here is that if I try to delete something, like for instance, if I try to delete pointer, so I would, I would say delete age pointer, so what's gonna happen is that 
both of these addresses are going to be deleted so we're going to cause harm to the other object i use the keyword delete and i know it's the pointer age now this is going to happen is that both of these objects will be deleted not one and it's both basically depending on each other so they're basically dependent and we don't want this we try to keep them independently now how do we resolve this kind of issue so this is our problem here all right so the resolution to this issue where we don't know like if we delete something and basically both of them are going to be deleted because they're pointing to the same kind of value this pointing to the same kind of address which is now a 294 so how do i change this up and how do i make them independent well the the way what we have is the approach what we could give is that instead of having the content is which is julian julian is basically copying but the address which is over here instead of having it copied we create a separate address here so we create a new address and what we're going to do is we're going to do we're going to remain keep this as the same thing but we're going to just copy that content over here we're going to create some new address and we know that it's a hexadecimal so it's just going to be some random ta uh, it's going to be some random address so this is some random address in the memory hypothetically speaking and now this is basically generating some new address this address is also basically pointing to a new memory right not the old one but something new now because this is totally destroyed we have something new over here and i would have another memory over here now this is empty now essentially what you can do is basically copy this kind of value that was in that old address and copy and paste it here so this is what's happening with deep copy this is deep copy and th this is how you're gonna apply it so now how do we solve this now we're trying to approach deep copy here so back in our code we just have to create a pointer here so now what I have is I have a pointer to int now if you haven't watched my pointers video or you have no idea what pointers are what I would do is de definitely encourage you to watch my pointers video where you could be seeing a card on the top right corner I would encourage you to click it on and then watch that video and then resume and come back over here so that you could get fully understand the concept of what pointers are so we have a pointer here pointer to int and I call this as pointer age pointer so this is basically our scenario here like we know that data types everything will be copied we know that floats will be copied we know that booleans will be copied we know that doubles will be copied through shallow copy but this case comes here when pointers arise because pointers are just the uh, storage for addresses right which are located in the heap so h pointer is just going to store some kind of random address over here in the student section instead of having it assigned to zero it's a pointer now so i'm just going to have this h pointer assigning it to so i would say h pointer ptr and let me just zoom this in so that you can understand it more clear uh, you can just look at it more clearly so we just have to have that null specified so that it's not pointing to anything over here in our deep parameterized constructor i'm just going to call this as h pointer so i would just have that h pointer and i know it's a pointer so i would just have a pointer too in right over here i would like you can do whatever we want but i like preferring over here so over here we have a name and over here we have an age pointer so we just have an age pointer and now instead of having like age like that we're gonna have to have it assigned to new and then we have an int because it's an int type so over here we have a display and we're just displaying our address and that's fine with here uh what about over here in student so student is a def default constructor called now we're gonna have a new additional thing over here when we're talking about deep copy we're gonna have copy constructors so we're gonna have a copy constructor where the name is just the student class and we're gonna be going inside of it and what we're gonna be calling here is that we have the student class so we're gonna create an object here so we're gonna say obj now we're gonna get an address of this so address of obj and now what we're gonna go inside of this and basically copy the content so we have uh, this and we have the name so just like the same thing name and we know that now object dot name and then same thing over here with the pointer so we have this now we have a pointer which is age pointer so we say age pointer and now we're going to assign it to an obj dot age pointer like that so over here we know it's an age pointer so here this arises that how am i going to make an explicitly defined address over here so if i'm call, copying over here s1 is equal to s2 i'm supposed to get julian and i'm also supposed to get the 22 value which is was supposed to be nine it's 19 here i want 22 so how am i going to do is i'm going to create a new address explicitly i'm not going to copy the pre-existing address because that's going to cause me to be dependent on the same object and this could case cause problems like we discussed about what what are the flaws so so what we're going to do is we're a newly defined address and we're going to call that uh, we're going to dis uh, create that explicitly um, so what we're gonna go is we're gonna do that using this piece of code so we're gonna do asterisk and we're gonna have this hyphen and this is the arrow and we're gonna say age pointer so the name of the pointer so we're gonna have age pointer and now what we're gonna do is equaling to so now the address which is the dereferencing operator and it would say object so it was object 
dot and then h pointer over here as well so this is the part and i'm just going to call this as copy constructor so we know that it's uh, basically defining the copy constructor and i would save this like as well so over here now you can see that this is working uh, what i would do is before that not even trying the copy constructor let's see what's the output so we have over here student west one which is bobby and the value is null because what we're having is predefined. We can't like specify any kind of value like 100 because we have to give some kind of address. So we're not specifying any address. So we say null, null. And now we will try to display it. So definitely it would give some kind of random address inside the computer. We're going to get for S1. And then we get a, uh, and we're going to get an, uh, what we say carriage return. And then we get another S2. So we display the contents of Julian and null address. What we're going to do is we're going to assign S1 to S2. So we're going to have um, S1 having the same contents of Julian and uh, the and null address. And basically we're going to have S1 and then S2 as define again so execute compile and run we have a problem here that age was not declared in the scope so this is basically age pointer so just save that and now execute compile and run so over here you have bobby you have the address 0xc71560 which is perfectly fine we know that this was an address julian which has a different address so 0xc758 which is different from this perfectly fine over here we copied this part we copied the, the contents of here to here so basically this bobby turned into julian so julian 0x perfect over here and perfect over here now you could see that they're both dependent on each other and this could cause problems for that we want want our copy constructor working so how do i call that is basically what i'm going to do is i'm not going to create this thing over here in the beginning and what i'm going to do is i'm going to save this and and i'm i'm preparing that i don't have it defined over here and now at that i'm going to use this copy constructor so this is going to i would say i would say student and i would say s2 is equal to s1 that's how we're going to do it so this is how the copy constructor is going to be called execute compile and run now you can see bobby is defined here 0x1a 1a560 now copy constructor is called and bobby 0x1a1560 now what we can see is bobby and 0x1a1560 and you can see that both of these constructors were copied identically and both of them were destroyed so that was explicitly done and this was the fact that how we could create deep uh, deep copy and st uh, shallow copy and so shallow copy also known as compiler generated copy constructor and deep copy copy assignment operator and these were the two main aspects here and i hope you understood these concepts behind them. what are the differences and why we need deep copy when uh, opposed to there's problems in shallow copy thank you for watching the video and i hope you understood the concepts and don't forget to like like and subscribe to my youtube channel and we will see you in the next video